UFC Vegas 63. These are the full card predictions and the betting breakdown brought to you by my bookie main event calvin cater fights arnold allen make sure you guys smash that like button if you're new subscribe turn those post notifications on and make sure to share the video as well let's get into the first fight of the night roman delidze fights phil hawes I'm picking Phil Hawes to win this fight. He's clearly the better striker between the two. He has the better wrestling. Now, Delidze, pure grappling skill, jujitsu-wise, has a little bit of an edge there, but I don't see him being able to take Phil Hawes to the mat. I see Phil Hawes defending any takedown attempt by Delidze, and even Delidze's grappling style. It's more so of a style that brings grinding pressure as opposed to a guy who's going to go out there, submit opponents. I don't see him really getting any dominant position on Phil Hawes. I see Hawes touching him up with punches. I think Phil Hawes is actually going to knock Roman Delidze out in this fight. There seems to be a huge gap in the stand-up. Delidze's last fight, he had a really good performance going out there and getting a solid win over Kyle Dawk is stopping him. He hit him with a weird hook as they were clinching up, stuns him, is able to get the finish in that fight. Phil Hawes, I don't see him getting chinned here. Now, of course, we do always have to worry a little bit about the Phil Hawes chin, but Delidze, I don't think, has a great ability of finding knockout shots against a guy that's as quick as Phil Hawes. I think Phil Hawes cleanly wins this fight. It wouldn't shock me if it goes all three rounds, but I think Phil Hawes is a really good pick here, and I'm going to pick him to win by a KO, though, because I think he has the power to sleep Roman Delidze. Now, looking at the betting odds for this matchup, Roman Delidze is the plus 140 underdog. Phil Hawes at minus 170 as the favorite. I got to ride with that Phil Hawes side. He's a decent enough favorite here, not a crazy wide line, and I think he's clearly the better guy and like huge advantages in the athleticism department. I really think his boxing is good. He slept Jacob Malhoun in one punch. He has clean knockout power. Outside of that Chris Curtis upset KO loss, and then Curtis moved on to be like a pretty solid contender, Phil Haas is good. And even in that fight with Chris Curtis, everybody's talking about how much better Haas was looking. I think he makes a statement on Roman Delidze here and knocks him out. Phil Haas, confident pick. Next fight on the card, Joseph Ugly Man Holmes fights John Young Park. I'm going to be picking John Young Park, but I have to acknowledge he's a little bit short compared to Joseph Holmes, 6'4 versus 5'10, 7 inch reach advantage for Holmes. But Joseph Holmes is just not super technical to me. I really feel like he's a very raw talent. He has decent striking from range. To me, he's Jamie Pickett light. He's a, like a little bit worse version of a Jamie Pickett. Doesn't have the same physical strength as Pickett, and I don't think he's as explosive. John Young Park, I see him closing that distance gap fairly well. He definitely has a boxing advantage here. He hits harder too, and he has the wrestling in the back pocket. I can see him taking Joseph Holmes down, controlling him a bit from the top position. I don't like the disadvantage in the height, but Joseph Holmes, I don't think, should be to John Young Park. At the end of the day, Park's a pretty solid fighter. He has some quality wins in the middleweight division. He's a good guy you know, outside of the rankings. And I think this is too much of a test for Holmes. I know Holmes just destroyed Alan Amadovsky, but Amadovsky is not near UFC level. John Young Park should look good out here winning this fight. I do think pressuring and mixing in wrestling is a huge key to victory here. I see him getting the win over Joseph Holmes. I am leaning it, though, to go the full three rounds and Park to win a decision. I'm not questioning Joseph Holmes as far as durability goes at all here, but I am going to question his ability to control range and his ability to stop takedowns. Two things that I think John Young Park does fairly well. He's got some sting in the hands. I think he beats Joseph Holmes on the cards. Now, as far as the lines for this match, up. Park is a wide favorite. He's sitting around minus 255. Joseph Holmes sitting at that plus 200 range as an underdog. I think Park should cleanly win this fight. I really see him looking pretty decent out there getting a win. He's definitely technically better than a Joseph Holmes. He just has some disadvantages as far as the physical attributes go, but ones that he, I believe, will overcome. Last one for John Young Park. He also beat Eric Anders, who's a guy that's taller than him, fairly athletic too. Holmes taller than that, but I don't think has the level of an Eric Anders. This for me is a good fight for John Young Park to get a clean win. Let's keep moving up the card. Next fight, Chase Hooper fights Steve Garcia. I like Chase Hooper in this fight. 
I know a lot of people are on the anti-Chase Hooper side. He has a very underdeveloped striking skill set, but it's getting better. He has solid straight punches. He's really long. He's super tricky with the grappling. Steve Garcia is not an easy guy to take down. Chase Hooper is a guy, maybe not best wrestling abilities, but finds ways on top of opponents, has a pretty good, you know, back climb that he could potentially do against the cage. I do think Steve Garcia has a bit of an advantage in the stand-up, but he was badly slept by Machate four months ago. Like, you remember that knockout? Steve Garcia fell flat on his face. I'm not really comparing the styles of the two here, but I do think Chase Hooper could land straight punches on a Steve Garcia. I think Chase Hooper is going to be able to get dominant position on Steve Garcia. And if they go to the ground, Chase Hooper's jiu-jitsu skills to me are vastly superior to his opponent, Steve Garcia here. Now, Steve, he does fight out of the southpaw stance. I think that could maybe be a little bit of a benefit for Chase Hooper. He works on getting single legs and backing Steve Garcia up against the cage. I also think Chase Hooper is developing okay standing up especially with the straight punches I think a straight right down the line could land on Steve Garcia I don't think he's knocking Steve out I think submission is a realistic outcome I like the length advantage I like the jiu-jitsu skill set and I just like the overall weirdness of Chase Hooper's style enough so that I'm picking him to get the win over Steve Garcia now, as far as the lines in this matchup, Chase Hooper is a favorite. He's sitting around minus 230, Steve Garcia plus 200, plus 205. I don't think Chase Hooper should be this wide of a favorite at all. I think betting side of Chase Hooper, money lining, not the best idea. I am expecting him to get the win of Steve I don't know, maybe that submission prop will be a better option, you know, as we get closer to the fights. That might be what you want to throw down on if you're going to bet Chase Hooper. Because you can't completely, you know, count Steve Garcia out. He has pretty solid takedown defense. I'm actually surprised to see him this big of an underdog. If they wanted to do it, maybe like a minus 150 range for Hooper. But I don't see him in the minus 200s. I think this is more close to a Pickham's matchup. Chase Hooper, I guess, just... The hype is on his side a little bit. The momentum's on his side. And I think the true grappling advantage on his side, the bookies are over overshooting that line to me. I'm picking Chase Hooper to win, but Steve Garcia can still fight. And on the striking department, I do think Steve Garcia could actually hurt Chase Hooper. Granted, Hooper finds ways to weather storms. He's incredibly tough. And I do think the grappling is the ultimate difference maker. Chase Hooper, I'll pick him to win by submission over Steve Garcia. But he's too wide of a favorite. Next fight on the card, Andre Arlovsky versus Marcos Rogerio de Lima. I'm going to be picking Marcos Rogerio de Lima. We have seen Andre Arlovsky quietly put together a four-fight winning streak on extremely close decisions. Beats Chase Sherman on the cards. He clearly outpointed Chase Sherman in that fight. Beats Carlos Felipe in a very competitive fight. Probably deserved the decision there. Got it done by, by just enough. The Andre Arlovsky point boxing, kickboxing style that he's been able to employ on a lot of opponents at 40-something years of age is pretty crazy. He then fights Jared Vandera, wins a split decision. That split decision win over Vandera looks bad to me. Because Jer Jared Vandera has, you know, fallen off bad. I mean, he just recently got stopped by Chase Sherman. He's barely outpointing a Vandera. That's concerning. The Jake Collier split probably should have went to Jake Collier. It was a very toss-up fight. Arlovsky got hit by some decent punches. Collier, a big, thick dude, was able to close the gap on Arlovsky and have some success. Marco Sagirio de Lima is clearly the better striker than Jake Collier. He hits harder than Jake Collier. He has a good Muay Thai style striking set. Closes the gap well. Big knockout win over Ben Rothwell. Last one, he loses to Blagoy Ivanov. That's just a hard stylistic matchup. And we're still a competitive fight that goes to three rounds. I'm looking at Arlovsky and I'm like, he's 43. He's going to get chinned again eventually. That's how it has to end for Arlovsky. Marco Sagirio de Lima, to me, has the punching power to do so. I also think he has the physical strength outweighing Arlovsky by upwards of 15 pounds, probably. By fight day, maybe even more than that. But that's an advantage. I do think de Lima should look to grapple a bit with Arlovsky. Look to put him up against the cage. Slow Arlovsky down. Don't get into a point kickboxing fight with Arlovsky because that's what he's been doing a good job at winning. I'm going to pick Marco Sagirio de Lima to win. I think a knockout is possible. I'll pick knockout, but a decision wouldn't surprise me. I still think Delima's going to be able to steal rounds here, and I expect him to look to get this fight to the mat and maybe even have some success putting Andre Orlovsky on his back a bit, controlling from that top position. I could see big punches landed in close range, especially against the cage, and Delima sleeping Orlovsky. We're going Delima by knockout over Andre Orlovsky. Now, as far as the lines, Orlovsky's actually underdog money, around plus 160 and up. Marco Sagirio 
Lima in that minus 210 range as the favorite. You know, Arlovsky on that big four fight winning streak, I'm surprised not to see him in, you know, a, a better status as far as the line, as far as being like closer to being a favorite or even, you know, a near pick'em's line here for this fight. But I guess we have to be realistic. D. Lima's the younger guy. I think he packs the punch enough so to sleep Orlovsky and he's better on the floor. To me, Marco Sigirio D. Lima only loses this fight if he's choosing to play Arlovsky's tit for tat pit patter kickboxing style game at a slower pace if Dilema pushes the pressure on him puts him against the cage is willing to throw big and powerful shots and also mix in wrestling too I think that Marco Sidirio Dilema gets his hand raised could be on the cards the official pick gonna be knockout though I think he can sleep Arlovsky Andre Arlovsky though quietly could be on a five fight win streak if he wins this fight which is absolutely insane at 43 gotta think though for Arlovsky there's going to be that fight that ends him. And it's only going to happen. Retirement for Arlovsky, I really believe, is if he gets chinned maybe multiple times. I'm picking DeLima to win by knockout, but I'll bank on this. Even with DeLima sleeping him, Arlovsky ain't retiring after this one. Let's keep running up the card. Next fight of the night brings us to our main card. Already the main card, right? We lost so many fights on this card. We only have now nine official bouts. This one, Trayshawn Gore and Josh Froomed. I'm picking Trayshawn Gore to win. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, how are you picking Trayshawn? He looks so bad against Brundridge. He lost to Brian Battle. He doesn't throw punches. He's Mr. Inconsistency. On inconsistency. He's gun shy as fuck. Listen, Trayshawn Gore has devastating KO power. He's a really quality kickboxer and he's developing. He's the same age as Josh Froome. He also, I feel like, you know, lacking the pro experience. That gap is going to be closed eventually with these fights now in the UFC. He's had fights on the Ultimate Fighter, fights now in the UFC. He's getting accustomed to the big stage. Josh Froome, to me... A little bit slow on his feet. I think he has a little bit of what's called knock knees, where his knees kind of cave in a bit. Doesn't have great footwork. Okay punching, but he's upright and super tall. Like, the chin is up in the air to just be cracked, in my opinion. Last fight, he loses to Anthony Hernandez. Hernandez more so goes towards the grappling. Trayshawn Gore is a powerful striker. If he can close that gap and land punches, which I believe he's going to, he has the knockout power to sleep Josh Froome in this fight. I think Trayshawn Gore is going to get his first UFC win here, and he's going to put a stamp on it, sleeping Josh Froome. I can see it anywhere in the three rounds picking around I could see it early I could see it in the first three minutes but I'm kind of thinking it'll be somewhere in the second round because Trey Sean little bit of the slow starting issue we've seen in the UFC and I mean it cost him bad against Brundridge Josh Froome to me doesn't have the wrestling skills that he's just gonna be able to easily manhandle Trey Sean Gore I see Gore fending off takedowns even if Gore is put against the cage and controlled a bit the control time could add up a bit I think eventually Trey Sean creates space finds devastating strikes and he knocks a Josh Froome out he has to here I'm picking Trey Sean Sean Gore by KO. I'm still believing in the prospect. I'm not writing him off yet. The bookies are writing him off, though. They think it's over for Trayshawn. But at one point, people were really hyping this kid up. He's sitting around plus 155, upwards of plus 175. Josh Froome sitting in that minus 200 range. is a strong favorite. I could never pick Josh Froome as a minus 200 favorite, especially against a guy who, to me, is clearly better at striking and way more explosive and athletic. Josh Froome is not a fast twitch muscle guy. He's more of a pressure fighting style will wear on you can strike a bit as decent kickbox and he has knockout wins too but I really think Trayshawn Gore is going to chin him he's too upright and tall he doesn't have the footwork this is a perfect opportunity for Trayshawn now to come in as an underdog and build that momentum back and I think he's a pretty good dog bet too Trayshawn Gore win by knockout over Josh Froome let's keep moving up Next fight on the card, the heavyweights going at it on this main card. It's Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Jared Vandera. Listen, Waldo Cortez Acosta has some nasty stand-up. He's a guy that is tricky with the striking, brings power. He's the pick. I'll tell you guys straight out. We're, we're picking Waldo Cortez Acosta. The guy he fought, it was Danilo Suzar in the Contender Series. That didn't impress me. He has some fights where, you know, he, he dealt with some wrestling adversity outside of the UFC and still was able to overcome that and eventually find the knockout. He's a guy that carries power throughout the entire fight. Jared Vandera, very upright Muay Thai style of striker. He's not super mobile. He's very hittable down the center line. More so throws a lot of hooks and wider shots okay kicking skill set but nothing that impresses me Waldo Cortez Acosta is 
clearly the better boxer. There's a level difference. He's also a lot quicker. I think he's going to find shots right on the chin of Jared Vandera. These guys both six foot four, reach similar, 80 inches for Vandera, 78 inches for Acosta. But let's be honest, Vandera, even as long as he is, he doesn't do a good job at keeping that distance and controlling range. I see him getting cracked here. I think Waldo Cortez Acosta has a legit chance to get the KO. I expect Jared Vandera to get caught with shots right down the center. I really think Waldo Acosta-Cortez is a pretty solid jab, which is going to follow with good straights. He has like a slapping overhand that'll do too. I kind of feel like that shot might not work as well against Vandera, especially if he's on the outside. But if Vandera is in close, I can see that shot working. He was more so able to use that against the shorter opponents. He's looking eye to eye with Vandera. I think a jab and straight punches will work wonders here. I see him picking Vandera apart and stopping him. Vendera's not an easy guy to put out. He still has pretty decent enough durability. I'm kind of seeing a, lock, a knockout in like second, third round, more of an accumulation of strikes. But Acosta should get a pretty clear win here and look fairly impressive, man. It's a must-win situation. If he loses this fight, the UFC probably did a mistake even signing him because Vandera, a bad four-fight losing streak now and seems to be on his way out of the UFC. And he's being used as a stepping stone. Waldo... Cortez, Acosta, sitting around minus 200 is the favorite. Jared Vandera at plus 175. I like Waldo, Cortez, Acosta. I, th I, think he, I think he makes it look pretty good. Like, I like the stand-up skills. I like the way he boxes. I like the way he moves. I like the jab. I think he's way better with footwork. I think he's way more mobile than Jared Vandera, and he's a lot harder to hit, and he's quicker, too. He's going to sleep Jared Vandera here. Waldo, Cortez, Acosta, pretty confident pick, and he should get it done here in his UFC debut. Next fight is the featured bout of the night. Dustin Jacoby versus Khalil Roundtree. Can I say something? This is striker's delight. And it's a great cross matchup of power striker in Khalil Roundtree and more technical precision pro kickboxer Dustin Jacoby. What is Khalil Roundtree great at? Sleeping pro kickboxers? Two notable ones. Slept Gohan Saki badly. Slept Khalil Roundtree, excuse me, slept Carl Roberson. Khalil Roundtree just slept Carl Roberson. Khalil Roundtree is the guy who knocks out these pro kickboxers. I think he adds another name to that hat. I think Khalil Roundtree will sleep Dustin Jacoby. Jacoby has very good straight punches. He controls range fairly well. He fights at a very controlled pace. He had an impressive win over Daoon Jung in the last one. Khalil Roundtree has the X factor though, extreme knockout power, devastating oblique kicks at this point, he knows how to destroy people's knees, he puts a relentless pressure on opponents, you look at the guys that have beaten Khalil Roundtree, Marcin Pranchino, that's a bad loss, I agree, that one doesn't really age well, Ian Kutelaba though, a guy who's going to take you down and beat you up, and then also the Johnny Walker, big elbows KO, it's Johnny Walker when he was on the way up, he looked unbeatable, but you look at the last two wins, Against quality strikers, he was able to pick them apart and win. Khalil Roundtree is developing a really dangerous striking game, and he's always had freakish KO power, power that carries throughout the entire fight. At any point, he has the knockout power to sleep a Dustin Jacoby. I see Jacoby getting clipped with a big shot here and knocked out. Khalil Roundtree has a legit chance to make himself now a real like ranked level light heavyweight. This matchup is huge for him. It's a big step up in competition. I think Khalil's time is now. I think he's finally going to shine here. The the power advantage is clear. I don't question Khalil Roundtree's durability. I really like the power Muay Thai and pressure. I think he's going to bring a lot of forward momentum towards Dustin Jacoby. Jacoby will more try to keep distance and outstrike him. And I think that you see Khalil touch him with an overhand shot that stuns him. And he'll follow up and, and finish it off probably with ground and pound. I'm picking Khalil Roundtree to get the KO. He's a freak, man. He's a freak athlete, freak explosiveness, and he's developing real good Muay Thai. I think he gets the KO win over Dustin Jacoby. Now, I guess I also like the fact that he's beaten pro kickboxers before. He's kind of the boogeyman for these pro kickboxers. And I think he's going to add Dustin Jacoby to the, uh, the death list here. Khalil Roundtree by KO. As far as the odds, Roundtree is an underdog. He's sitting around plus 135 as a dog. Dustin Jacoby in that minus 150 range as the favorite. Dustin Jacoby should be a big favorite here. He should, realistically on paper, he should be able to keep, you know, Khalil away from him and outpoint him for three rounds. But realistically, when that cage door closes, especially the small cage, I think Khalil's pressure is going to be a factor. Don't be surprised if Khalil tries to pin him against the cage and work some clinch. And I feel like Khalil Roundtree finds some sneaky punches and hurts Dustin Jacoby. And I mean, you can't count out those obliques, those, those oblique kicks. Like, the way he stomps at the legs... Devastating. Ends careers. I think he's going to sleep Dustin Jacoby with the hands, though. I'm going Khalil Roundtree for the KO. In a sense, he's like the Derek Lewis of light heavyweight. 
I think he's on his way to getting towards contendership. It's really now or never for Khalil, and he's been around for such a long time. Co-main event, Tim Means versus Max Griffin. Listen, Max Griffin's the pick here. He should be able to beat the older Tim Means. I know Max Griffin's 36 too, almost 37, but he looks young, and he still fights really youthful. Very good movement. Max Griffin's pretty light on his feet. I've always felt like he's a little bit awkward in the way he moves, but it works well for him. He's pretty quick with his striking. Tim Means fights out of the southpaw stance. I think Max Griffin's got a pretty good straight shot that he can land on the you know down the center line of Tim Means. I don't see Means with a significant wrestling threat in this fight. I think Max Griffin's going to be able to outstrike Tim Means, stop takedown attempts. I do think it's still fairly competitive. Tim Means is not a guy that goes down easy by any means. I mean, Tim Means can still mix it up with anyone. He can scrap pretty good. He's got pretty decent submissions. Like, Tim Means is a tricky fight for a lot of guys. Max Griffin, though, has so many advantages to me in, like, the explosiveness department, athleticism, the way that he moves is better, the way he closes distance is better. He's got a little bit longer reach, even though Tim Means is taller. I just see Tim Means getting stunned a bit by straight shots, and Max Griffin out kickboxing him. There will be some clinch situations. I think it's pretty competitive there. I maybe even favor the physical strength side, though, towards Max Griffin. I'm picking Max Griffin to get the win. I'll say he does it on the cards, win by a decision. He should look pretty good here against Tim Means. As far as the odds for this one max griffin in that minus 180 range tim means upwards of plus 160 i gotta ride with max griffin here i think that he's coming into his own i know he's 36 right so he's not young he's almost 37 he's not young in the fight game but i really feel like this is like max griffin's prime right now and he's a guy that's always been slept on i remember when he beat mike perry and nobody kind of you know remember i don't know so i think you guys remember it but like nobody really was talking about it at the time because they were still pushing heavy on mike perry to try to get him towards contendership obviously because of that marketability i think max griffin is a pretty good pick and gets a solid win over tim means and the odds aren't bad for him either let's get to the main event calvin cater versus arnold allen if you guys haven't yet make sure to smash the hell out of the like button listen this is a very intriguing main event I'm going to pick Calvin Cater, but Arnold Allen is a game underdog, and he's a prospect on the rise. You look at the last five wins. Jordan Rinaldi, not a huge name, but a clean win. Beat Gilbert Melendez, legend of the sport. Nick Lentz, OG veteran with really good wrestling. Sadiq Yusuf, freak athlete, really good Muay Thai. And Arnold Allen dropped him too. And then you look at the last one. He destroys Dan Hooker in a round. The back and forth brawl. That fight got crazy. Calvin Cater on the opposite side. Jeremy Stevens knockout, which just jumped the hype way up. Fights Dan Ige, gets a clean win there. They give him Max Holloway, and he's nearly killed inside of the octagon, losing every round and just getting destroyed by significant strikes throughout the whole thing. But he showed one thing. He's the toughest man on the fucking planet. He beats Giga Chikadze, elite kickboxer, outstrikes him there, gassed him out too, hurt him with shots. Calvin Cater can box his ass off. Loses to Josh Emmett by like a semi-controversial split decision. I kind of felt like Calvin Cater should have got that one on the cards, but they did give it to Josh Emmett, who's a damn powerhouse. Calvin Cater's durability is unmatched as far as all featherweights go I mean I guess you can put him up there with the chins of like a Max Holloway Arnold Allen he hasn't fought somebody to the level of Calvin Cater Cater has fought the best of the best all the names I just listed off very 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 good guys you also look back a little bit before, very competitive fight. He did lose, but it was against Zabit Magomed Sharipov, and he won that third round. To me, that's impressive. It's fought the likes of Hanato Moicano early in the UFC run, lost that fight, beat Shane Burgos by knockout. Calvin Cater is proven, and I really feel like his boxing skills are going to lead him to the win here. Arnold Allen has good striking slash Muay Thai stand-up, good kickboxing. He is more of a guy that does looping punches to close the gap. He likes overhand shots. He likes hooks, whereas Calvin Cater is a pretty solid jab, and he fights well from distance. Also note, Arnold Allen out of the southpaw stance, I think Calvin Cater is going to be stinging him with straight punches. I don't see Arnold Allen having success out wrestling a Calvin Cater. I see Cater stopping any takedown attempt thrown his way. He's not a guy that gets controlled. And I also feel like... We're going to be probably majority stand-up to speed advantage I give to Calvin Cater. Now, Arnold Allen has that youth edge. He's 28. He's fighting the 34-year-old Calvin Cater. I kind of really like this matchup too. This is England and Arnold Allen versus New England and Calvin Cater. I got to go with the New England guy, Calvin Cater, to get the win. I say it goes five rounds. I say it's a competitive fight, and I think Cater gets it. I'll say official scorecard, 49-46. 48-47 wouldn't surprise me, but I think Calvin Cater outstrikes him, keeps the distance well. I think Allen has some moments especially in the clinch. 
I think Cater's able to escape, control distance some more, land pretty good shots. I can see him stunning Arnold Allen a couple of times, and I'm picking Calvin Cater to get the win. And I really feel like, if not for that bad decision loss to Josh Emmett, this is the number one contender, Calvin Cater. Winning this fight puts him back at least close to contention. Right now, featherweight's going to be a logjam because Volkanovski is fighting Islam Makachev in Australia, which is crazy. He's going up a weight class. Probably Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett, number one contender fight. Tailing right behind is going to be Calvin Cater, maybe the winner of this fight, a fight out from that title shot. There's a huge opportunity, though, for both these guys. And for Calvin Cater, it's a must win. He's 34. He just lost by, you know, semi-controversial decision in the last one. A loss to Arnold Allen can't happen. I'm picking Calvin Cater to get it done. I'll say he does it on the cards. As far as the lines, this is a pick -em's fight. I love these odds. About minus 110 on both sides. You can find it a little wider either way. You can find Arnold Allen ever so slight at a plus 110 dog. It's a pick -em's matchup, as it should be. And I'm saying Calvin Cater to get his hand raised, winning a decision. And I really feel like he's going to get a title shot again. I, I think he's going to get one. I guess really first title shot. I'm thinking of the Max Holloway as a title shot. I think he can still earn a title shot. Calvin Cater is a fun matchup too for Volkanovski. I'd like to see that fight. Calvin Cater, the pick. He beats Arnold Allen. I do think Arnold Allen's a great prospect. He's going to be game in this fight. Odds are really, really close for a reason. It's a super competitive matchup, but I think Cater can just do more. I'm picking him for the win. Calvin Cater, UFC Vegas 63. I think we are in store for an awesome card. I know the name value through it all isn't huge, especially after we follow UFC 280, which is you know one of the best cards of all time. But how the fights are going to look, I think we have bangers. Make sure you tune into the Fight Companion on Saturday. I will be live for the entire UFC Vegas 63 fight card. Make sure you guys smash that like button if you're new. Subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and make sure to share the video as well. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the picks. If you don't have anything to say, we just enjoy the content as always. Drop a W in the chat and run over to my bookie. Use promo code experts if you're looking to throw down some dinero on these matchups and uh, cash a little bit. Thank you all so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, everyone.